Okay, so welcome to um, the problem solving sessions for the uh, sixth AGDA lecture in the hottest summer school 2022. And uh, we are talking about uh, the bow tie today, which is a wedge of two circles. And in general, you can have a wedge of um, K circles. So this is a wedge of two circles, this bow tie, which is taking two circles and gluing them together in one point. And then you can have a wedge of three circles, which is taking three circles and gluing them together in one point. This is the wedge of four circles and so on. And then you might ask, what does the loop space look like? And uh, hopefully um, I can try to convince you that um, so the loop space based on the point where they're glued together. Uh, so we're asking how, what kind of paths can we take here that start and end in the middle here. And then of course you can go uh, forward on this one, uh, which I called B, forward on this one, which I called A. And then of course you can also go backwards there on both of them. And then you can combine them after each other. So you get some sort of like all the elements of the loop space are like A followed by B, followed by the inverse, followed by A inverse or something. Uh, and this structure, if you're familiar with uh, group theory, uh, if not, um, then don't worry too much about it. But this is uh, exactly the, the structure that you have in the free group on two generators. So a way to think about the free group, if you're not familiar with this concept of a free group, is uh, the way I think about it, is that with the free group, it's the group where you have no other constraints than the ones you have from the group axioms. So for example, the group axioms say that um, these two will cancel out. And then, well, in my particular example, then also we have A and A inverse left, and these two will cancel out, or we will get uh, the neutral, neutral element, which I will denote as one here. Um, yeah, so the free group, like you, you have two generators, like two elements that aren't related to each other. They are different from each other. And then you can just um, multiply stuff together as much as you want. And you have an inverse to everything because of the group axioms. And you also know that inverses cancel out because of the group axioms. And that's it. That's uh, all you're allowed to do. And then the resulting thing you get from these rules is the free group on two generators. So hopefully that kind of uh, motivates why the loop space of the bow tie will be the free group on two generators because at this canceling thing is like, if you go B and then you go backwards, it's the same thing as do nothing. So um, that cancels out in the loop space. Okay, so um, I think I would like to actually go to the part where we prove or we calculate the loop space of the bow tie as the free group. Is that okay? Or does anyone really wanna see the um, recursion from the elimination principle? Then I will of course do that. In that case, uh, speak now or wherever, hold your peace. <laughs> I think it's okay. Uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, I think it's okay. We can uh, go to the <clears throat> to the exercise in the loop space. Let's like loop space directly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. Um, oh, okay. Uh, one second, I realized I only shared um, that window. I should share my entire screen. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, there we go. And now, um, do you see Anka? Yes, we see your other editor. Awesome. Um, how is the font size? Can you read it? Yes, perfect. Perfectly. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. If anyone disagrees, just write in the chat. I have it up here. So I'll see it and then I'll change the font size or whatever you need. Awesome. Um, all right. Um, so this is where we start now for this part of the exercise sheet, calculating the loop space. <clears throat> so first of all, um, we haven't constructed the free group on two generators. So, but we are doing like he did uh, in the lecture. We are assuming that we have a type which satisfies all the properties of the free group on two generators. I won't uh, uh, really, try to explain why uh, these are the correct things. But um, yes, just uh, you need to trust. Uh, we need to trust Dan and me that these are in fact the correct things you want to assume to say that F2 is the free group on two generators. Uh, yeah, and also uh, we will need also that F2 should be a set. Okay, so we will try to do um like he did in the lecture so this will be quite similar he did uh the loop space of the circle we will do it of two circles that are glued together which is a different thing but still kind of close so first of all we have the bow tie it's a higher inductive type so uh, in agda which is not cubical uh, you have to do higher inductive types by postulating and then doing rewrite. So we postulate we have a type bow tie, and uh, we have a point base, which is this middle point where the circles are glued together. And then we have loop one, which is one of the circles, and then loop two, which is the other one. And then we say, how do we? Uh, construct something of this type. You can think of it as uh, if you have the uh, types as propositions uh, interpretation on X, then how do you prove that for all X in a bow tie X, <laughs> capital X of X holds? This gives us the rule for how to do that. And then uh, we make sure that it behaves as it should, that if we construct such a function like this. So we have function, something of this type. And then if you plug in base here, we wanna make sure that what we get out is this thing that we, um, this X is what we wanna map uh, base to. <clears throat> All right, and then um, this one we use rewrite so that this will actually reduce to x. Um, so by definition, so we could use REFL for this uh, thing. And here uh, we have um, corresponding things for the loops, which has this dependent app, um, which we're not assuming we write, which um, Dan talked about in one of the lectures. Essentially, uh, as I understand it, it's not worth it uh, to have rewrites here because it doesn't really help you that much in the end. But this one is worth having a rewrite. Okay. Um, let's see. Where does it start here? Okay. Some lemmas. Um, I think let's wait with these until uh, we have a use for them. I think that's nicest so that they're motivated. All right, so if you remember from the lecture, um, 
he defined a cover, um, which uh, I'm thinking how to explain what that is. Um, essentially, um, we are giving a type for every um, for every element in both type, we are uh, returning a type. Um, so for the circle, for example, uh, we had the integers. You can think of it as having the integers over every um, over every um, element in the circle. And here, uh, I just want to bring up my notes. There it is. Yeah. Here, in this case, we will have the uh, free group of two generators over every element. That's how you can think of it. So, how do we construct now um, this uh, thing? We need to use. Well, either bow tie a limb, which will construct something of this type, uh, which we want to use when this X is a type family. But in our case, this one, uh, this is not a type family, this is fixed. So then we can use actually break, which we haven't uh, proved, but uh, I think that should be fine if we need uh, the definition, then I will just copy paste what I've done previously. Uh, but here you can see that this is the special case when X doesn't depend on the element in bow tie. <coughs> so I'll use this one. And here, let me go here and look at it. So you should think of this as uh, we want to have a function from both time to x. <clears throat> and then uh, we need to, of course, say, uh, where do we send the, the middle point of the bow type? That's x. p is where we send the first loop, which should be a loop from x to x in capital X. Q is where we send the second loop, um, also to some loop from X to X in capital X. And that gives us the full map from all of the bow tie to uh, X, which hopefully makes sense. Um, but that's what we need to do. So um, this is where we should send the um, point in the bow type, and that should be a type. So, all we want to send it to is F2. And now, here, uh, this is not very nicely written, but this means F2 equals F2, which um, you should think of as, um, let's think if I can, let me bring up the picture again. Um, let me redraw the bow tie. Okay. Um, black. Okay. Um, so we want to have a type over every point here. So like some type which kind of lies over this point, some type over here, and so on, all over every point here and here. And we have a type here over, which is F2. Um, and now, um, how should I describe this? The thing we want to need to do now uh, 
in this hole, which is type F2 equals F2, uh, is that we need to say what happens if you um, go one loop here and, and back here. Like if you have, if you start with something, um, you start with something in here, point in here, and then you follow it along uh, over, over the loop, sort of over the circle down. Um, so I think of the bow tie lying at the bottom and then I have all of these types above it. And then I can do this path over all these types over the loop. And I can see where this thing ends up. And that's kind of what I'm supposed to put into the argument that we are at now in Ida. Um, so I should say what, uh, uh, yeah, what happens when I go one loop? So uh, what I want to do is, um, okay, so first of all, I have this, this thing, right? So. Um, this thing you should think of as, so you have your free group with two generators, um, say A and B generators for F2, then you should think of mult one as um, like multiplying by A. So it takes an element in F2 to another element in F2. And mult2, as uh, you can think of as multiplying by the second generator. Yeah. So, sorry, a quick question, maybe. Um, um, but uh, we, we must associate these multiplication rules with uh, uh, the corresponding loops uh, somehow because one loop uh, 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 have a, a, a one uh, generator uh, associated and the other has the other one. Exactly, yeah, that's right. So um, that's how you should think of it. Like uh, one loop should correspond to one of the generators in this free group. And um, the other loop in the bow tie should somehow correspond to the second generator. Uh, and we don't have access to the generators per se. We only have access to this mult function. Um, and well, both of these, which multiply by one of the generators or the other. Um, but that's uh, enough to make it work. But you can think of it as having two generators and multiplying by them. Okay. Did that answer? Yes, but uh, uh, my question uh, is, um, uh, how to how to specify that the uh, one multiplication is associated with p and the other is associated with q? Right. Uh, this is where uh, actually what we're doing uh, now, sort of, um, because in this uh, slot here that I'm at, um, yes. we should say by bow tie rec. We should say where um, where loop one is sent. Uh, it, we can see this here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so this uh, computation rule says that if you do bow tie rec and apply it to loop one, you get P. Okay. okay. And then if you do bow tie rec and apply to loop two, you get Q. So that means that what we put in here is what we want loop one to be mapped to. Okay. And what we put in here is what we want loop two to be mapped to. So that is how we are actually associating those two generators now in this moment, right here. <laughs> Did that answer? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, we can't exactly put mult one here because it's an equivalence and we need an equality uh, to like this. I'm sorry, I need to turn off Discord a second. There we go. Okay, uh, but we have univalence, which uh, we love. <laughs> now we can use it to get from an equivalence to an equality. So 
so we need to do this thing. But um, according to the, um, this is not the full univalence, but it, we also know that it should, it, it computes as the equivalence. So it does what we want it to do. So here, UA mol2, and this is now associated to the second loop. Uh, right, so um, what we have said now is that, uh, first of all, we, so for every, um, we want to have over every point in the bow tie some type. Uh, and what we have done is said that um, over the middle point, we have the type F2. And then uh, it's enough to say that if we go one loop here, we get um, the function that multiplies by one of the generators. If we go uh, over the second loop here, then that corresponds to in here doing the second multiplication. Um, and that's that's all what we needed to define this this uh, function. Awesome. So of course, I mean, if you wanted to, you could associate the second multiplication to the first thing here, and the first multiplication to the second thing. That wouldn't matter. Uh, it's not symmetric, but uh, of course, it's nice to keep them so that we have loop one to mult one, loop two to mult two. Yeah. Just wanted to make that clear. And again, here, like in the lecture, um, in the end, we want to like have the equivalence where we put in base b here for x. Um, but it's easier to um, prove, like, this is a kind of general uh, thing that it's uh, a lot of the times easier to prove something more general. And it, that's also the case here. So we prove it for a general x a function from here to cover x. And then if you put in base b, you get a function from the loop space um, at base b to cover of base b, which will be f2. OK. So uh, we do like he did in the lecture. So an x and a p, first of all. So we have this x here, and p is this path from base b to x. Now we need to produce something in cover x. And we do the key did. So we use transport cover. Let's see what this, what type this has. Um, OK, so transport cover takes um, some path down in bow tie uh, between two points in the bow tie and then returns a function that takes something in the first over the first point to something over the second point. Uh, we have a path p. So now this has the type uh, takes something in the cover of base b and returns something in cover x. We need something cover x. And cover of base b is f2. And this is where the computation, the rewrite for bow tie um, rec is really nice. Um, although I don't know if we have it now that it's not filled in. So let's see. Uh, because then this cover base should compute to f2. So let's see what happens. And uh, now I need, of course, something in F2 here to plug in here to get cover X. And what I want to do is uh, 1F. Let's see if this. Right, so I get yellow here. Yeah, uh, this is probably because bow tie rec is not defined, so it doesn't know that it uh, actually computes to the correct thing on base. Um, so let me just quickly 
um, copy so that we get rid of this annoying yellow. rid of the yellow. Awesome. Um, that was in code. That was nice. Uh, this is the same thing as with the lecture. This this direction uh, was easier. This one is a bit uh, more work to define the decode. But we will do it um, now. I'm bringing up my notes again. So um, we need to construct a function from bow tie. And how do we do this? Well, we use bowtie elim, right? So bowtie elim will get us in the end something of type for every x in bowtie, capital X of x, which is exactly the kind of thing we want. So um, let me just also give the first argument, which is. Um, essentially this thing, but uh, you put lambda x here instead. Oh, put it at the same line, come up. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So now uh, we need to do three things, which correspond to like seeing where the where base is mapped and what happens over loop one and loop two. So I'm actually gonna break, I, I split it up slightly differently than in the solutions by Dan. Um, but not, it's not completely different, but I split this out. Uh, so let me copy it and faster. All of these three holes, I split them out into their own things here. So here we need something of type cover base B to base B equals base B. And cover base B is um, F2. Uh, so that's the first thing. So let's. that this works yes and then down here we need path over something something loop one decode base b decode base b okay so let me break that one out also and write it um, using the nice syntax for path over um and then we'll try to figure out how to actually do this. There we go. And then uh, almost the same thing for decode loop two. This is nice um, because <laughs> like it looks like we uh, got so far already. We already defined this whole thing, <laughs> but we actually just moved uh, the problem. But it's uh, it's kind of nice to work that way because you're like, oh, I'm filling all of these holes, and then yeah, I don't know. It's like a psychological mechanism for me, at least. Anyway, let's start with decode base uh, B. So for every element in F2, we should construct a loop uh, from base B to base B. All right, so um, and let's see if we can think of the picture again. So we wanna associate each of the loops to the generators. So now we have an element in F2, which is something of the form like A, B, B inverse, A inverse, A, something like that. And we wanna associate with it a loop. And then of course, 
like to, for example, for the um, for the AB. So let's say this is so. So this is loop two and associated to B, and then loop one, and we associate it to the generator A. Then if we have like A, B, of course, we want to send that to um, loop one concatenated with loop two. This is like the picture you should have in mind. Now to actually write this in Agda is, is a slightly different thing. <laughs> uh, again, we don't have access to the generators of F2. Um, so we need to do it in kind of a roundabout way. What we do is we use F2 rec, uh, which is one of the like assumptions of this module that we have this F2 rec, which says, how do we construct a function out of F2? Well, first of all, we need to say what we send one to, which is this thing. And then um, we also need to say what happens with the multiplication and what the, both of the multiplication, which should be equivalences. OK, so let's fill this in. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is now where one should be sent to. So picture again. So the neutral element here, um, which loop should we send it to? Well, it makes sense that we should send it to the loop that doesn't go anywhere. It just stays in the same spot here, um, which is the flexivity. So send it to repo base B. And now, again, back to the image. Um, or let me bring it up back again. Okay. Now we want to say um, what corresponds to molt one. So multiplying by A. What kind of thing should that correspond to? And the, the type uh, of the thing is taking a loop uh, and, well, an equivalence between uh, the loop space on base B, base B. So like you can think of this as a function that takes a loop here, returns a new loop, and then it has an inverse uh, picture. So multiplying by the first generator should correspond to adding a loop one. Uh, so concat, i.e. concatenating with, um, let me write it. So like uh, mult one, which correspond to like um, multiplying by a should uh, correspond to um, adding a loop one at the end. This is the idea. Um, so we need this loop one adding loop one uh, equivalence thingy, um, which we have already set up the type for this up here. So here um, it says, okay, we have a path uh, from A prime to A double prime. And then that gives us an equivalence between paths from A to A prime to paths from A to A double prime, which um, the idea is that like to go from here to here, you concatenate with P at the end. And to go back, um, you concatenate with the inverse of P. And then 
the concatenating with P and then the inverse cancels out. So here in Dan's solutions, again, I'm gonna diverge slightly from his uh, solutions. He, you can define this by um, pattern matching on P. So I can just do that. And then what you end up with is something like this. You need to have an equivalence from this path type to itself. And we have, of course, an equivalence between any type and itself. So that's fine. And then um, you can prove this thing. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it can be either defined by this concat equivalent by path induction on P or explicitly doing the whole equivalence. Uh, the difference um, is that if you do pattern matching like this, it will, it will only, the equivalence here will only compute uh, when P is reflexivity. And this is why you need this thing that proves that um, going forward, going the, uh, from here to here, is the same as concatenating with P. While if you don't pattern match and do the explicit equivalence back and forth, then you define it in the right direction by concatenation. And then this equivalence will by definition be concatenation even when this is not reflexivity. So um, it will compute even though P is not reflexivity. So that's the difference. Um, this is easier to define, uh, which is nice. Just one little thing here. The downside is that you need to have a lemma like this. And if you need a way backwards uh, to prove that that's concatenation with inverse, then uh, you need a lemma. So this one we also prove by pattern matching. Um, so then we need to show that the forward of the identity equivalence is the identity map, which it is by definition. So this is just refl. And then you need to show the same thing for backwards, although we won't need it in this case. But um, I prefer this to actually compute to a concatenation forwards. So I decided in my solutions to define this equivalence explicitly. So I will actually, because then um, if you do it this way, then you will need to do like app and then to use this equality here. While if you define it, uh, all of the components here, this equality will be definitional. So it will compute. So um, that's what I'm gonna, do I'm rebelling against uh, Dan now, doing it my own way. But I will just uh, copy um, my code here. I think it's not worth putting the time here at this moment because we only have ten minutes left. I mean, oh, it's so hard to um, stay on time. <laughs> Takes so long to do stuff, so. I'm definitely not gonna do anything. I'll try to do the most interesting parts. All right, I need the A and I need the P. There we go, okay. But this one just says going um, the forward direction is concatenating with P to the right. Going the backwards direction is concatenating with inverse of P to the left, and then I prove that these are inverses. Okay. Now, back to what we were actually doing. And also I need to scroll in my notes. Um, there we go. Okay. Concat equip, that's what we called it. And then um, our left, like in concat equiv, our A here, the left side of the uh, path type, 
in our case it's base b and then um, it says okay if you give me a path then i will give you this um this uh, equivalence so that is now which path we should concatenate to which corresponds to multiplying with the first generator and that is of course uh, loop one okay same thing here but now this corresponds to multiplying with the second generator and that should correspond to concatenating with the second loop Okay, yay, we defined uh, something at least. <laughs> Hopefully it's the right thing. Um, let's think, let's think. Um, I do have to do, decide what I wanna do here. I think let's continue to just define this function by doing these two. These are almost the same, so I only need to do one of them and then I'll just copy my code. Okay. Um, now we need some sort of path over thingy over loop one. Um, so let's uh, try to tackle that one. I think that's worthwhile because path overs do take some time to get used to. So um, they're good to work with. Okay, but uh, when you do path overs, it's often useful to look at the type that you have here and see if you have some characterization of like what does path overs of that look like this on this form how do they work and we have such a thing for uh, when you have an uh, arrow here which is conveniently called um, path over um, oh i lost it in my notes uh, yeah, like this. Let's see what type it has. Okay, uh, blah, 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 bunch of stuff. But in the end, uh, uh, if you use this thing, you will get path over something with an arrow here, something, 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 which is exactly what we want. We want a path over with an arrow here, something, something. Um, so let's see, uh, now, uh, are there any explicit arguments we need to give? No, it doesn't look like that. All of these are implicit. And then we need to produce something of this type to get what we want. So control C, control R. Now let's see what we need to do. So for every uh, thing in cover base, we need some path over something, something. Uh, okay. So let's do um, let's do a lambda x because we need to see for every thing in cover base. So I'm going to call it x now. And remember, cover base is f two. So this is for every x in f two. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say that here, but this is F2. Uh, now we need a path over um, something, something. And the, the thing we have like in here for this path over is uh, a path type. And then we can do the same thing. We can ask like, do we have some sort of characterization of how we, to produce a path over where we have a path type here? Yes, we do. <laughs> Very convenient, which is called path over uh, path two. Let's see what it looks like. Blah, 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 bunch of stuff. But in the end, uh, we will get something uh, that is path over uh, a zero equals something, blah, 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 blah. So like uh, the first, the left-hand side of the path type is given, is fixed, uh, which is exactly our case here. Like uh, it's the left-hand side of the path that is fixed. And then you have to take a function 
of the second uh, of the right hand side of the path. Yeah, so this should be fine. And now let's just see what is it that we need to construct this thing. Okay, so now it's starting to look like something we can actually do because <laughs> now we have a, a good old equality or identity type instead of path over. Awesome. So um, let's uh, see where I did my notes. So here uh, I decided to split this, to move this equality out into a where clause. Um, and naming is al always hard. <laughs> so I just, maybe this is a bad name, I don't know. Decode loop one lemma. <laughs> which uh, I just want to prove this. So I want to prove this equality. Uh, I need to see what X is. So um, let me just copy this here. X is, uh, oh no, it's not a bow tie. Okay, never mind. X of type F2. I shouldn't try to be <laughs> clever. <laughs> Decode loop one lemma. All right. Um, now we can do like we did previously um, and pretend that we actually did something <laughs> and put decode loop one lemma x here. Yay, that hole is now filled, but we actually just moved it. But we can pretend. Okay, awesome. Um, let's just dig into this equality and see what we can do. So this is like how I actually work with this stuff when I do um, stuff in Ida. I just start to <laughs> attack it uh, stuff with everything I have in my arsenal. See what happens. Hopefully, something works. <laughs> okay. Um, now I'm using. Uh, I started using this nice uh, tip that I got last time uh, with the control C, control S to fill these holes with the um, equation and reason. So nice. Okay. Uh, let's start in more doing. Um, I am okay with going over time to finish this um, this particular thing so that we can finish decode loop one. Um, decode loop two is exactly the same thing. And then at least we have defined the decode function. So um, yeah, I, I will stay until that is done. It's uh, a bit more to do, but not that far. So okay. if you need to go, then of course, feel free to leave. But, um, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's try to attack this. Uh, let's try to think, uh, what can we do? What do we like? Do we see anything here that looks familiar? And what stands out to me at least? Um, is that uh, concatenating with loop one is exactly forward of the concat equiv base loop one equivalence. So remember, this is equivalence that when you go in the forward direction, you concatenate with loop one to the right. So that's the, uh, probably like suspiciously looks like something we should probably use. So let's just rewrite this. So forward of this equivalence applied to this path should be the same thing as decode base X um, concatenate to loop one by definition. Um, let me make it neater. And if we're right, 
and it's actually this by definition, then we should be able to use REFL here. Yay. So this is a step. If you define your concat equiv uh, with pattern matching, then this is the step where you would need to use this uh, to like apply this uh, equality. Um, so you would need to use this thing here, which says that if two functions are equal, then for every element, they um, return the same thing. But we didn't have to do that. And we define our equivalent like we did, because then it's by definition. All right, okay, nice. This is uh, something. <laughs> now let's um, see if I can convince you of the next step. Let's look at the code base B. So it's some F2 rec something something. And we have forward some equivalence. Well, in particular, this equivalence. So forward of this equivalence composed with F rec thing. Hmm. If you read this and remember these things that might ring about, perhaps. Um, let's see. Um, what I'm trying to get at is the, this thing. So like M1 is some sort of equivalence. I take forward of that equivalence, apply it to F2 rec something, this equivalence as the second argument that I have, same as I have here, something, something. That should be equal to something. And this is exactly the form uh, that we are dealing with uh, now. So let's just, let's apply this thing uh, in our case for our particular F2 rec and M1 and M2 and stuff like that. And what we will get then, it's easiest to just, uh, just paste it here. So uh, what we get on the other side is forward molt one, uh, A in our case, that's X. And then F2 rec, the same F2 rec that we had here, which in our case, uh, we have named the code base. That's, that's just a name for some F2 rec. So the code base applied to forward mult one X. Hopefully, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, we need to convert the, the direction of the equality. One. Okay. Uh, because it has uh, things on the other side, but so that's why I need to put this in the beginning. But otherwise, it's this thing, and let's um, be quick and <laughs> uh, not say what all uh, these. It's these things, but it takes a lot of space, and either can figure it out. Apply to X. Now we see f2 rec of something forward molt one equals forwards some equivalence f2 rec, which is exactly what we need. So let's see, control c, control r. Yay, it worked. Um, awesome. And now we are, it's looking uh, better because now we have decode base something equals decode base something. So, we are done if we can just we can do app decode base b, and then we will be done if we can prove this equality that um, forward mult one. So uh, this is now a function on f two to f two. Uh, so this is a function that multiplies by the first generator a on x. So this would be like the result uh, for mult one x you should think of as like x sorry, x multiplied by a. 
Um, we want to say that that is equal to um, transporting. Uh, let me go back to the picture. Transporting uh, x. So x is an element in here. Transporting that uh, along, sorry, along loop one should be the same thing as multiplying by the first generator. And this makes sense. It should be how this works because of how we define stuff. But we need to prove it. Uh, and I have, uh, now I have done like uh, Dan also did. Uh, I have moved this proof out because we will use it later. Uh, although we won't use it later in this uh, recording and this session because we're out of time, but uh, in the full solution, it will be used again. So that's why we move it out, not to copy a bunch of code. That's just unnecessary. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what we want to prove. We want to prove transport cover loop one equals forward mult one for every x. Um, how do we do this? Um, so this is again, we can use equivalence reasoning. So trying to be quick now so we don't go too much over time. Because you probably hopefully have, have lives to attend to. <laughs> so do I. Okay. What can we do here? Well, um, one thing that we can uh, always do is uh, you have this thing. Uh, so, um, okay, so we have this thing that says the transporting um, in C uh, along some path, some element. It's the same as some other transport um, along app of the path. Um, and yeah, okay. I don't know how other, what other way to motivate it than <laughs> this will uh, give us an app that we can reduce further. So let's use this thing. Our C is um, cover. And the path that we are transporting along is loop one. Oh, I need to, of course, see here. So what I get now, I've just um, instantiated this transport app as of for our particular things. And this is then what we we'll get on the other side. So there we go. Okay, I mean, this looks more um, involved, but the thing that we want to get at is app cover loop one, uh, which we can do something about. So um, we want to change this thing. So but the outer thing should stay the same. We can't do anything about that at the moment. Uh, but let's think about the type here for a second. So app cover loop one is something of type um, So loop one goes from base B to base B. And when you do app, something, then you get like app, sorry, you do app F on a path, then you get like F applied to the left side of the path equals F applied to the right side. So that's cover applied to base B equals cover applied to base B. We can reduce this even more because we know that cover base B is F2. So this is the type of it. So app cover loop one is an equality from F2 to F2. And uh, we have um, the rec, um, 
sorry. The bow tie wreck for loop one. Like, uh, so remember the function uh, we're talking about now is some, uh, the cover is some bow tie wreck. And here we have something that says what happens when you apply bow tie wreck to a loop, to loop one. You get out the um, first uh, of the P and Q. So let's go back to where we defined it. Cover here. So app cover loop one. Um, this is a bow tie wreck. And when you do app of a bow tie wreck to loop one, you get out this thing. So this is what we should put here. And you can uh, check that this uh, molt one is an equivalence from F2 to F2. So doing UA on it gives us indeed an equality from F2 to F2. So it type checks. Um, right, so now we need to do, first of all, we um, need to do app on this whole transport thing. Let me, actually, it's faster if I just copy. App transport. Okay, so now I just say that, okay, I just want to do equality on this thing. So this thing. All right. So now I need uh, this thing. But then I use the, the thing I pointed to earlier. So go tie rec loop one. And then yeah, let me just give the arguments. So um, it's these arguments, the ones we use to define the bow tie rec that we're uh, looking at. Okay, um, let me just remove that. Okay, uh, we are getting closer and then uh, that will be it for today. Um, so we're here. And now we need to use the uh, univalence UA beta. See what it does. So uh, this one says what happens. So univalence gives you uh, an a path equality, and then you can transport, do this transport on that path to get a function from the left side of the equality to the right side of the equality, and then apply that to an element. And that's the same thing as going forwards in the equivalence that you had to start with, which is exactly what we need. So very convenient. Uh, we need to say that transport some univalence and some equivalence is exactly forward to that equivalence. So, um, Nice. And now um, we can fill in this one here. Uh, mm, let's see. Transport cover loop one x. Yeah, it's almost what we want, but it's in the wrong direction. So we need to just this and then it's what we need. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, you essentially just copy paste all of this uh, for loop two. Uh, and then you have defined, um, you have defined the code. Then of course, what's left is to prove that they are inverses. So question, could we generalize parts of this proofs? Uh, proof so we don't have to copy paste our proofs so much, e.g. for decode loop two. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, hmm. I don't know of a way to do that. Um, we have like, at least not 
uh, inside Agda, I guess you could like write a script <laughs> that like if you had, you know, um, a, a wedge of like a lot of circles, you could of course write a script that uh, rewrites the code but it changes one to two and three and four and so on. Um, but I, That because this um, uh, the similarity between like decode loop one and loop two to me intuitively is like on a meta level um, somehow. Um, this is just kind of the vibe I'm getting. I don't know if I can put my finger on it, but so I don't think you could do that inside Agda, like inside the type system like because then you would want to have like decode loop uh and this to be some sort of variable maybe you could i'm not sure um maybe the harder exercise we talked about in the beginning could be a way um the harder so which one are you uh, referring to now <clears throat> Okay, which, yeah, um, right. Do this problem for uh, which of k circle. That's true. I mean, it does say that we should be able to be able to do uh, we should be able to do this for a general k. So maybe there is a way. There needs to be. Otherwise, we couldn't do. It for general k. That's true. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Okay. So maybe now I have uh, some ideas. <laughs> <clears throat> the thing is, if you do it for like a general k, then you're not going to be able to write out explicitly all the loops here. Then you're going to have to do something like um, loop. Uh, that takes like natural number and returns something base b, base b. So all the loops are packaged in one function, and then you get like something also for like a limb, like um, let's call it range. Okay, so now I'm not writing out everything we need, but. For every n, you get some sort of elimination thing. And then, yeah, I guess it should work. But then, I guess the answer to our particular case for the bow tie is that we can't do it. We have to copy because these two are defined separately uh, and not by a function that takes a variable, I think. In k instead of that. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, that's what I was thinking, sort of, but didn't write. Yes, thank you. You can make a function that selects one of them. Right. Yeah, right. Of course, that's true. We could define our own function from fin two to base b equals base b. That's true. It picks out loop one and loop two. And then, yeah, okay, maybe we could. <laughs> it's starting to convince me, but we would have to do a bit of setup. Maybe you're free to try it. And uh, um, please let me know if you have success in doing it. It might work, actually. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop the recording there. Um, how do I get the menu? Okay, stopping the recording.